When you graduate from a school in Canada, you're eligible to get a postgraduate work permit. A one year scholarship valued at 3,000. You have major scholarships valued between 3000 and 12000 What's up beautiful people? Welcome to my channel. My name is Nelly. If this is your first time here, you're absolutely welcome. On this channel, I make videos about life in Canada and scholarship opportunities around the world. If this is something you're interested in, then I recommend that you hit the subscribe button and you hit the bell button so that you get notified each time I post a new video. Equally, I have a page on Facebook called Nelly's Life. On that page, I post information about study opportunities around the world and just general tips on how to apply for schools so if you're interested in studying abroad and you want to get more information i recommend that you follow that page i'm going to put the link to the page in the description box so let's get right into today's video five things to consider when applying for a program in canada what is a designated learning institution it is a school approved by a provincial or territorial government to host international students. Why do you need to apply to a designated learning institution? Because to apply for a study permit, you need an acceptance letter from a designated learning institution. Another reason why you need to go to a school that is a designated learning institution is because it's one of the criteria for getting a postgraduate work permit. When you graduate from a school in Canada, you're eligible to get a work permit, but you can only get a work permit if you graduate from a designated learning institution. So as we've seen so far, you need to go to a designated learning institution because first of all, you will need it to apply for your study permit. And also secondly, you will need it to apply for a postgraduate work permit. How do you know if your school is a designated learning institution? there's this page you can go to i'm going to put the link to this page in the description box but when you get to this page you scroll right to the bottom and then you see view list by province or territory so you choose the province where you're interested in for example if you want to go to saskatchewan in saskatchewan you can see the list of the institutions the designated learning institution number, the city, campuses, and if they offer postgraduate work permit eligible programs. An institution having a designated learning institution number automatically means it's a designated learning institution. But another thing to check is if it offers postgraduate work permit. So for programs that don't offer postgraduate work permits, it's important that you don't apply for those programs if you're thinking that after graduating, you would want to apply for a postgraduate work permit. The second thing I will ask you to consider before applying for a program in Canada is to ensure that the program is at least eight months long and also ensure that the program is a full-time program. Why do you need the program to be a full-time program and why do you need it to be eight months long? Because these are the requirements for getting a postgraduate work permit. You can find some programs which are four months long. You can find some programs which say they are part-time programs. But best believe if you take those programs, then even after you graduate from those programs, you might not be eligible to apply for a postgraduate work permit permits in Canada. The next thing to consider when applying for a program in Canada is the language requirement. And just to add another thing to that, I will say also consider the program requirement or the admission requirement. Right here I have McGill University. This is undergraduate admissions. Let's go to language requirements. It says proof of English proficiency. If you don't meet one of the exemptions listed below, you will need to complete an English proficiency test as part of your application. Proof of English proficiency is an important part of the application process for many applicants to make you determine whether or not you need to submit proof of English ahead of time in order to meet a document submission deadline. So this is why I say you should take this into consideration because if you're not sure of if you need this requirement or not, you might not prepare to take the English test and you might find yourself 
not being able to meet the language requirement so check before applying if there's a language requirement and also check if you meet the exemption requirements the admissions office reserves the right to request proof of english proficiency from any applicant regardless of citizenship country of origin or first language at any time during the review process applicants who don't need to provide proof of english if you answer yes to any of the following questions you do not need to provide proof of english proficiency have you lived or attended high school and or university for at least four conservative years in a country where English is the acknowledged primary language, they provided a list of countries. If your country is among these countries, then it means you do not have to provide proof of English proficiency because according to this list, it shows that they have acknowledged that these countries use English as their primary language and as such, these countries will not need to provide any proof of English proficiency. You have other questions like this. If you've answered yes to any of these questions, then you're equally eligible to be exempted from the English language proficiency test. However, if you answered no to all of the above questions, you will need to provide proof of English language proficiency, even if you consider English to be your first language or have been attending a school at an accredited institution in a non-English country. The next thing I'll ask you to take into consideration is if the university offers scholarship opportunities. Finding scholarship opportunities is not so difficult. You can either find it in study, so you have financial aid and awards and then you go to scholarship and bursaries here it shows you the list of scholarships at this university you have undergraduate scholarships you have admission scholarships prestigious scholarships everything you need to know about scholarships will be right here so you can click each and every one and then it tells you the information about the scholarships available let's go to another school let's say mcgill to find scholarships in mcgill you go to student life no okay you go to admission have scholarships and financial aid you click that it's going to take you through everything you have managing money you have entrance scholarships these are scholarships that you can get before you start your program at this university you have a one-year scholarship valued at three thousand you have major scholarships valued between three thousand and twelve thousand and you have other scholarships so if you're interested that's the procedure on how to find it generally finding the information about the scholarship is not really difficult you either go to admissions as we saw in this case or or you go to study but it will always be among these options provided to you the next thing I will want you to consider when searching for a school in Canada or when applying for a school in Canada is the location for instance let's say your school is located in Alberta and then you click it's going to give you a bit of information so it says it's famous for sunshine mountains open spaces forests fresh air and then it just gives you a bit of information about the province living and working in Alberta, the available pre-arrival services the foreign qualifications that are recognized in Alberta, and everything that is particular about that place also with another province like like let's say ontario it just tells you about ontario that newcomers may find job prospects in ontario strong economy in finance tourism manufacturing arts and sciences and just gives you basic information so before you settle for any school know the province you are going to be living in and just get basic information about the province for example this one says new brunswick is easy to travel to many major north american cities like these cities and what it offers great jobs a low cost of living excellent health and services so 
it's just good that you familiarize yourself with your new environment even before you find yourself there by just getting to know basic information about the place thank you so much for staying tuned with me see you in my next video goodbye